Okay. Welcome to Joy in the Morning. <laughs> what are we going to talk about? What you looked up on Google? Yes, to start. They, uh, Jackie looked up on Google the most asked question about God, and the top of the list was, why does God hate me? How sad is that? Because we have a God, the true and living God is a God that loves. Uh, he hates sin, but he loves people. So much so that he sent Jesus uh, to pay for this, our sins, not just theirs, our sins. And uh, it's so sad that people live that way and, and with, with the answer so close. Uh, mm -hmm. And that should be visible not only in the Word of God, but also in the lives of every Christian. And what's really, you know, uh, another way we can see that God loves us is just through creation. Um, the, we have so many wonderful things that we get to experience and enjoy, you know, and we can look around and we can see God in creation, right? So that shows us that he loves us. And um, From our from, perspective. From our perspective, yeah. You know, we haven't been abused away from right. God. No, we haven't been abused. I mean, even by information. Right. False false claims of science and psychology and um, philosophies and all yeah. of those things. So we live in an age of information where mm -hmm. people want to, uh, if they want a question answered, what do they do? They just quickly Google it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that might not be the greatest place to find <laughs> your answers. No. He's written all this down in his word from the very beginning of the word of God to the very end of it. That's right. Um, that we would be able to see that he loves us mm -hmm. and that we would uh, be able to understand, have knowledge of him. And if we'll put the energy and effort into the scripture, we'll come to see just how amazing our God is and yeah. how wonderful and caring. And yes, he's just and righteous, all those things, but he's also merciful and gracious and forgiving and mm -hmm. And he is love. After He's a loving father. Yeah. And um, I feel really sad for the people who don't know him and uh, you know, have to go through trials and things without him. I feel really sorry for them. I wish we could you know, do something with that. but Lead them to hope. Lead them to hope. <laughs> <laughs> wish we could teach them somehow. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So... Um, as Jay said, you know, last, not yesterday, but the week before, just how um, all of Scripture is about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Everything points to God and to right. Jesus and to salvation in Him. Yes. And all of us have a decision to make. You know, are we going to believe it or not? Those are really the only two decisions there are. But that's where it comes down to in everything in life. There, the, Everything needs to come to this point where we say, I'm not only going to take it as information, but I'm going to Receive act it. upon it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it a part of my life in such right. a way that it changes the way I think, the way I act, the decisions I make, all of those things. Mm -hmm. And that's what sets... Um, not just Christianity, but the joy of being uh, with Christ and the hope that we have a future. All, all of these things is when we decide, I'm not just going to listen to it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live it. Right. No matter what that means. Right. No matter what that means. If it means, you know, um, an easy path, which a lot of people have super... You know, easy lives. Should it, can I it say it? It looks. That? It, it looks, looks like, like it. it from this side, but and then some people have harder lives. And mm -hmm. either way, um, you want to have a relationship with Christ. And no matter what your life is like, the Lord Jesus Christ is better. Right. It, he is an answer to improvement, to yeah. help, to yeah, to living in the love and grace and hope right. of and Jesus. Right. To having hope and to having comfort mm -hmm. and all those things. So yesterday you mentioned Joseph, Mary, um, the shepherds, 
wise men. Mm -hmm. And then you also mentioned Herod and um, Simeon and Anna. Mm -hmm. And um, they all, each one of them, heard the truth. Heard the truth. They saw the sign. They heard the truth. Mm -hmm. They came to a point of decision. And then they had to decide what they were going to do with it. So Joseph had to decide if he was going to believe the angels mm -hmm. when they came to him and said, Mary's going to have the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Mary had to choose to um, say yes. Humbly submit. Humbly submit, mm -hmm. yeah, to give birth to the Son of God. And the wise men traveled from the far east. Mm -hmm. And they made the decision to do the hard thing and travel all that way and um, search for the baby in the manger. And Simeon and Anna both were very old when they finally got to see the Savior, but they had waited their whole lives mm -hmm. to see him and finally got to see him. But what, what was Herod? Let's talk about Herod. Herod was self-centered and when he heard that there might be another king he was jealous uh, Herod was the king afraid Herod was the king and he liked being the king mm -hmm. now by king we do mean a regional, regional king yeah. but still he was the guy on the throne right. and when he heard somebody else might want it he didn't look for the hope of Jesus oh, and, and the Messiah I think of Herod and I think oh you know he's <laughs> riding by in a parade and everybody's going, oh, yay, it's here, you know, clapping and everything. And then all of a sudden there's this baby Jesus that's going to be born, and he's mm -hmm. the king of the Jews, supposed mm -hmm. to be born the king of the Jews. And Herod mm -hmm. didn't like it. No. And so he got angry. He got so enraged that he was willing to kill all the children under two years old in the whole region yeah. of Bethlehem. I mean, what kind of rage is that? I mean, we're talking about, you know, serial murder on a yeah. huge scale. And what was introduced to him was the hope of the world. Yeah, and so he had the same opportunity to receive the baby Christ as everyone else did. Mm -hmm. And yet he chose to be selfish, to follow mm -hmm. his own path instead of believing what the Word of God had said. One of the things that you know, is of note that we didn't talk about much was, you know, here is a ruler in Israel, okay? But he is a ruler there under the authority of the Romans. But all of his advisors, they didn't know what right. the star was about. They didn't know a whole lot of things. And so, you know, there's, there's good advice comes from godly advisors, but the advice he got, what hadn't been good up to that point, yeah. there was no helping him from that group that he had put around himself. Yeah. So the things that we listen to every single day, mm -hmm. they're critical to how we're going to respond That's when really, we do see an opportunity. That's really good. And then when we, um, and then when he was presented with the truth, he couldn't recognize it. Mm. Well, maybe he did rec well, recognize it. Well, he just it. didn't like it. <laughs> he, didn't, he just didn't like it. Didn't like what it was going to do. So. But there's another thing where you're looking at the prophecy of God, a God who never makes mistakes, and you're looking at that prophecy and you're saying, I can change it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> God wrote this down. He's yeah. going to make it happen. It's going to happen. So, uh, you know, the arrogance mm -hmm. of our human mind yeah. is what often keeps us from the very hope. That is Jesus Christ. So all these people were, um, they were given the opportunity to receive the love mm -hmm. that God was offering right at that moment through the birth of Christ mm -hmm. or rejecting it. Mm -hmm. And we are all, we've all been faced with that same question and we're actually faced with it every day. Yes. And what we're Not going to do with it. but what are we going to do? What are we going to do with it? Yeah. You know, because we're still here because God's not finished with us on earth right. yet. So are we going to believe this little group of friends over here mm -hmm. who say... Um, One thing and these people say something else. Yeah. That's right. It's, it's so difficult. Um, if you're not in the Word. If you're right. in the Word for yourself. 
not just taking what other people say. If you're in there and letting the Holy Spirit lead you, uh, your life will change. And your life will change over time because you'll understand more of Scripture. Right. You'll comprehend more of what forgiveness really is and, and how blessed we are as yes. children of God. Yes. Uh, and we're not looking for every single moment to be some massive blessing. We're understanding that the fact that he is with us and we're going to heaven and we have a purpose here and he has surrounded us with so many wonderful people. But mm -hmm. I'm saying, you know, we don't have to have the next greatest thing every day. You don't have to be the king. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be the king. But we are so blessed, and God does pour blessings out on his children, you know. And it's not him pouring out um, all of the things that are happening that people see. It's just mankind's mm -hmm. wickedness that uh, we see all these things happening. Well, the compounding results of sin mm -hmm. for millennia. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And now we find... That it's it's getting even more chaotic and confusing because uh, the people who are are knowing the truth, living the truth, are becoming a more and more minority mm -hmm. in the noise yeah. of this world. Information, you know, years ago was trickling, yeah. and now and it you is could have bombarded. a greater influence on the people that you had in your flock because mm -hmm. they weren't getting all this other information in constantly and now it's just a constant well we have people today of information 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 constantly we have people today who will let's say they'll come to church but they'll come to church for a 40 minute message once a week maybe they'll attend an online bible study that lasts for half an hour you know and then they'll spend eight hours a day yeah listening to news, listening to Facebook, Instagram, all these other things, and just being bombarded with right. everything. Um, you know, how do you expect to show uh, the results of your time with God if your time with God is like a breath in the, day, in the week, yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, I think the so same thing. So therefore, you won't have the joy and the hope and the comfort Absolutely. and all those things. You won't have it. Because it just gets stolen away from you from the you know the mm -hmm. moment that you change the channel or right. you know change the input. That's right. Your joy and all that gets stolen right away from you. And we're not anti-technology, all that no. stuff. No, but what we're me, saying this house is has technology. <laughs> but you have to pick uh, your counselors well. Yeah. And those people who are talking in your ear. Oh, that's nonstop. so good. Because guess what? All these people on the phone that you're looking at, <laughs> they're your counselors. They are. They are. You're taking all that in. Mm -hmm. And it changes you. It changes it changes everything. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're looking into the word, into the real, real, true word of God. And a lot of times, okay. what you if you'll take note of it, you can watch your behavior. You can... Uh, you know, take note of your feelings, and you can watch how uh, upset, how frustrated, how yeah. alone, how uh, right. you know, all these things happen. A lot of times, the more time you spend with that kind of information, as opposed to if you spend time in prayer and meditating on the Word of yeah. God, and I'm that not, changes you too. I'm not saying you need to be a monk, but if you look at the way you feel. Mm -hmm after having confessed and, and studied the Word of God versus how you feel after... A long day of nothing but out worldly impact. Right. Whether it be in the workplace... Or your friend or, next door. Right. Whatever. Yeah, it really it's changes important. you. It does. It gives you that. When you're in, when you're in the... When we say the Word of God, we mean the Holy Word of God that right. was, you know... And, and that old adage that, they, that was said... You know, you may be the only Bible some people read. I mean, that is very critical for us to understand what we put out there in our behavior, in our words, mm -hmm. in uh, in the things that we do and say in public, in on online. All of these things right. may be 
the, someone's only chance. Right. And the Holy Spirit can use your presence yes. in their life. It's critical. To draw him in. It is critical now more than ever that we line ourselves up with God's path. Amen. You know, that we don't have to worry about all these choices over here. We just take our life and line it up with God's path. Walk down that path. You know, and you don't have to see far down there. You just mm -hmm. take one step at a time and follow Jesus and you'll have all those things. You have peace, joy, comfort, mm -hmm. and you'll also um, have a life that matters to, you know, someone else. That's you'll, right. You'll be able to um, help someone and... And make a difference. Make a difference for someone. Mm -hmm. And boy, do we need that. We all need that right now. This world needs that. And when so. we are a voice of hope, a voice of encouragement, um, it is, it is, um, I believe, powerful. Mm -hmm. But not if it's in contrast to the way we are all the rest of the time. No. It's got to be who we are. It has to be who we are. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us. I took us it a long helpful. time to get those guys, but I hope <laughs> hope it made sense to you and that um, pray pray God uses it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Have a blessed day.